So we have our actual pieces. Let's um, actually set up how the constraints connect them together. So RBD, and I, I type in RBD rule to get to RBD constraints from rules. And there it is. So this will allow us to you know, connect the pieces together in a very convenient way. So the way we want to do it here, you can do hinges or surface points. Sometimes I get little problems with hinges, so I'm going to stick with surface points today. But they'll both work. Basically, we're going to take, um, we're going to put little constraints between these guys here. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll just show you, actually. So surface points, and then we're going to want to put the new constraints that we make into something. I'm going to say put them into metal, like so. So something you can do, a lot of these, all these RBD toolset nodes have three inputs at least. Sometimes they have more. So if you want to do a convenient, like if you want to make another RBD node from a previous one, instead of, let's say, RBC uh, constraint properties, you know, you could hook them up like that. You can do it. Uh, you can also shift click each of these and put it to one and it'll do it. Also, while you're making the node, if this is selected, you can go RBD rules and press hold down shift and press enter and it will hook them up for you, which is nice. Um, but that, actually, that's not the one I wanted to do. Oh, let's do RBD exploded view. Cool. Show constraints. And now you can see what it, we've done. We can see all the constraints between them now. And that's what we want. That's, that's the stickiness, that's the glue. Well, not the, I shouldn't say glue, but that that is the, these are gonna become glue constraints later, meaning they're stiff, and they're gonna transition to being soft constraints when they are broken. And that will keep it together, but it will allow it to you know bend around. We'll get rid of that. So this is, Showing these pieces are dark. That means that they're affected. If I if I increase the search radius, you'll see it will include that. I do actually. I'll want that later. For now, I'm just talking about the metal that keeps all this stuff together. So service points, primitive group. They're all going to be in this thing called metal. And I could do something like name equals metal star to ensure that it only does. Um, it only makes constraints in terms of this. I mean, it looked like it was doing it anyway, but now we're, we're absolutely sure. So we have the constraints, but we haven't told Houdini what they really do. Like how strong are they? What kind of constraints are they? So RBD um, properties. So I do RBD prop, shift enter, say which what are the constraints we're working on well that's metals the ones that we said that we're doing here now technically those are the only constraints that exist so far so we didn't really need to say that but for completeness switch constraints enable that means when the glue is broken it will switch to soft and remember again glue makes things completely stiff and soft means that it will they will kind of bend a little bit we can deal with the actual different um properties later. Cool. Uh, let's go here and say RBD rules again. Ah, I forgot to press shift enter that time. So there you go. This time I'm going to say I do want everything to be affected. I want to do a, I'll do service points again, but I'm going to say all to group. In this way, I can say, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'll say the input group can be everything, but the group itself can be that back piece. So everything will attach to the back piece if it can. Now, nothing turned dark here. That's because nothing can really reach it. I'm going to turn the search radius up to like 0.5. So you can see it's only gluing this to whatever's closest to it, because we said all to the group, and the group is just this. And these things are just too far, so nothing happens. I would actually prefer to see it more down the side here. So I'm gonna go to the box, give it some more resolution. Those will, now these new points that we basically created along the edge will be candidates for this. So if I come back here, you'll see, there you go. 
Same thing again, RBD properties, constraint properties, shift enter this time. And actually, and I already forgot here, we need to say, we, I gotta call it something. I'm gonna call this solid. I never want these to break. And the way we do that is we say, only work on solid, and you can see it, it's showing us here. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff you can do yourself, we can set up polylines ourselves with this, but that's what's so nice about the RBD um, tool set is that it, it has all these nice visualizations. It makes things just much easier for you. At any rate, negative one. Oof, and it turns black. Negative one strength means that this will never break. So that's the idea. These things can break up here um, if, they're, if the glue strength is overcome. These ones will never break. Finally, um, and again, there's not much to do. It's, it's actually surprisingly easy now. Uh, finally, let's do a configure. RBD configure will take what was just raw polygon geometry. You know, even at this point, you could technically, you know, grab points and move them around. You know, you shouldn't be able to do that for rigid bodies. So, ah, died. The RBD configure will now turn this into actual packed pieces. Now, we talk more about that in my rigid tutorial lessons or any other rigid body lessons you might want to watch. Uh, but suffice to say, they're now safely packed up into little containers and they're now going to be cons considered or treated as one object. So we have to do that before it goes into the sim um, or else it will, it will do it for us anyway. Better to do it ourselves though so we have more control. For example, we need to set up some parameters. There's all kinds of stuff you could set on here. Um, you know, collision shapes and sleeping and whether they're animated, physics things, bounce, friction. I'm gonna say they are all active and they are all animated. Now, what happens here is that if it's animated basically means that if the pieces are moving around, let's say we hand animate where they are, going into the sim, then in the sim, if it's allowed to, we'll just move the pieces there. They're literally hand animated. However, it won't do it if the pieces are active because if the pieces are active, they're actually dynamic. So they can't be both hand animated and let's say also falling due to gravity. So active will win here. Now the reason why I'm turning animated on then if it doesn't matter is because over here, I'm gonna make another set of parameters except this one is only gonna apply to that back piece. I'm gonna say you are not active. He's still animated though. So we have a whole bunch of pieces First we say everything is active and animated, then number two executes and says, you know what, actually on second thought, this back piece is, uh, is not active, but it is still animated. We could do this, that would be the same thing. We'll just do it, maybe it's just a little, a little easier to understand. So there you go, so this one's animated and everything else is not. Everything else is uh, completely active. And then we need to do an RBD pack RBD pack is not any more real setup other than to say, take these three streams and condense it down into one. It's basically a merge. In fact, it's literally a merge. It's just uh, packs everything up, names it, merges it. And it's just, all that really means is it's just much easier. If I wanted to, and we'll do this later, if I wanted to merge two of these setups together, I don't wanna have to merge you know, this and then merge this and so on. It's um, this just does it for us. So there you go. We'll put that and and that's pretty much in its basic form. That's pretty much it. We we have a minimum viable product now of a asset, a simulation asset where we made pieces. We constrained them together and we turned them, we made them into actual pack pieces, and then there you go.